Uh, so good morning or good afternoon or good evening wherever you are in the world. Uh, Talent Finders uh, would like to welcome entrepreneur, author, award-winning television personality uh, and creator of the Spin Gym, Spin Gym Fitness Sensation, Forbes Riley. So welcome, Forbes. Oh, are you talking about this Spin Gym right here that I'm yeah. using to stay fit while we're all locked in our houses? Yes. Yep. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> It is one of the um, coolest things ever, and how I crazy! I have to get myself one. Yes, yeah. When I wear, but you you don't live here. That's a problem getting it to Europe, which is frustrating right now. Well, I could just get it uh, to my friend in New York, and then we can make a plan. So yes, yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. That's actually what we've been doing a lot. Yes. Uh, so uh, I wanted to congratulate you on all your achievements. Um, can you please share with our audience how your entrepreneurial journey started? started when I was a wee little child, long, long time ago. I had a... <laughs> hey, by the way, thank you for... I want to start out by saying thank you, Karen, for reaching out through social media. What, you live where? In the United Kingdom, for now. Where? where, where? <laughs> uh, in a place called Chichester. Okay, so I spent a lot of time. Actually, at one point, I made 48 trips to London in six years to... Wow. You know, gym on QVC in the UK. I love over there. Yes. Um, but I wanted to thank you. You know, so many times entrepreneurs are like, well, how do I get started? What do I do? One of the things that you've done over the years is you followed me. You commented yes. on me. And for those of us who are public but not stupid famous, like Oprah or Angeline Jolie, they're stupid. I don't think I read any of their own stuff. I do. Yeah. And I would say most successful people have a handle on their social media if they're smart. Yeah. And so I've interacted and we became friends. Yes. And that's one of the that I don't think entrepreneurs understand that I didn't have a roadmap or a blueprint on how to be successful. Yeah. I just had a few simple principles that I would do over and over and over again. Number one, first principle that's very important to me is that you know what you want. 100%. I've asked people a lot, a lot and they do not really know what they want, own it, dream big enough. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is you got to figure out in your heart, why do you want it? Yeah. What is it that gets you up every morning to work really, really hard when there's no boss telling you what to do. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah. And then you put in systems and you connect with people and you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So for me, uh, my dad never worked for anybody. He wasn't, he didn't graduate college, but he was an engineer, he designed large printing presses. And I would see him go off to work every day with his, you know, but he never had a boss. Yes. And, um, we also didn't have a whole lot of money. When I was a teenager, he had a horrible accident, spent three years in the hospital. Wow. Some of the principles that I learned, my parents always saved money, even though we didn't have a lot. It was important to them in their mentality to buy some stocks and invest and always have a nest egg. Well, I can remember when I was getting very successful, my accountant said, oh, you know, you live well below your means. Now, let me share something with you. That's a stupid statement. Of course it is. <laughs> Well, no, but that's what accountants and people do. Yeah. Um, and when you read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm. you come to understand the difference between a liability and an asset. 100%. And having your money work for you so that when 2008 hit, I was fine. When okay. COVID hit here, I was fine. Yeah. Because I don't have the big fancy car and the private jet. And the, I mean, I own a lot of things. I own shopping malls and a television studio and things that can generate money. Yeah. But that's not why I do any of this. No. The next thing you need to understand as an entrepreneur is when you say you want money, that's actually not a real statement. No, it's not. You want money because you want to look at it in your bank account going, look how much money I have. Or because you want the very big house or you want the diamond jewelry. Or are you interested in helping people? Are you interested in taking a vacation where you want to be able to afford that? Yes. So for me, the money is always about what is it going to be? Yeah. I want, in fact, that's how I got to Africa the first time. I, my ex and I wanted to go to Africa and it was like a $10,000 trip that we planned and we yeah. didn't have the money. So I said, you know, I need to make $10,000. Mm. And the crazy thing is I said it enough that one morning I went in for an audition and I booked a job for an investment company called Charles Schwab. They came to my house. We shot this crazy campaign and you know how much they paid me? Exactly $10,000. Yeah. We got on a plane and went to Africa for six weeks. Amazing. Right. So wow. you have to decide what it is that you want. What is important yeah. to you? Um, and so for me, it's been an interesting journey. I've always wanted to be an actress and a television host, and I've done a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, 
But I also was someone who fought their weight. I was bullied. I was overweight. My mom was large my whole life. And that got old. And so somewhere along the line, I had to meld my, uh, my passion for finally figuring out, number one, how to get fit without big equipment. And the overarching thing that I'm going to leave everybody with today that I do almost better than anyone in the world yeah. this, hang on, is pitch. Karen, what do, you, what do you think pitch is? Well, for me, it's, a, it's the way I look at it because I've had to do this myself is that when you pitch, it's not, I mean, obviously you have an idea, but it's, it's you, it's the name and the face that people are buying behind the idea. No, no, no. I'm going to actually make it even simpler. Okay. In my, in my brain, I believe that pitch yeah. is the secret for you getting anything and everything that you want in life. Now, I'm not yeah, talking about selling a product. Yeah. If I want to go for French food and you want to go for Chinese and I win, that means my pitch was better. Yeah, because <laughs> it so seriously, my kids True. would pitch me all the time, and I saw a lot of animated movies because they knew how to pitch me. Yes, and the truth is, pitching is a skill that you can. I now teach it. By the way, you should come to class on Sunday nights at five p.m. Eastern. Okay, I'm now teaching. It's nineteen dollars at the moment, but it's going up. I okay. teach a two-hour class on how to pitch. Okay, and what does that mean? It means getting a yes. Getting yes. a yes all over the place. Mm. You pitched me to be on your show. I have a lot of things to do today, but somehow because you, the way you structured your pitch, I'm here, yes. right? You didn't try to sell me anything. No. So write this down somewhere and I want you to promote, it's called www Pitch Secrets Master Class. Okay, got it. Two hours of my time, I'm still doing it live. I'm actually doing my third one next Sunday. Okay. And it is a very much give back on my part. Because people have it wrong. Here's what most entrepreneurs do. They get an idea or they leverage somebody else's idea called affiliate marketing. Yeah. And they start trying to sell it. Yes. Well, one of the things that people do all the time is they don't realize that we don't need to be sold. No, and people don't want to be sold to. They no. don't want to be sold to. But they do have things that they want, right? Yes. So think about a grocery store. You know, when you walk into a food store, Yes. You know what you want? You, they, they put the stuff that you want really badly in the very, very back. Yes. The milk and the egg, the things that you want. I, I want to, I need milk for my kids. But when you walk through the stores, all the things that you don't know that you might want. Yes. Oh, oh I'm on the way. <laughs> yeah. But they design it that way. That's a very well thought out conversation. Mm. It's also so, like the music they play in shops. So if they want you to hurry up, they'll play fast music. And if they want you to take your time, they'll play is a whole psychology about the music as well. <laughs> well, there's a psychology behind everything in your brain. So let's actually start with something. Here's the first psychology I tell entrepreneurs. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Make your name matter. Hi, I'm Forbes. Forbes Riley. Forbes as in the magazine. Yes. Now, what image did I just place in your brain? Forbes. You know Forbes magazine. You know it's yeah. about millionaires. 100%. Success. Right. But if I just said, hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and you're like, what, you, what was your name? I don't ever want to hear that. And so we make our name matter. The second question that you always get as a, as a marketer, as a networker, as an entrepreneur is, what do you do? So I'm going to show your audience something very fun. Karen, what do you do? Uh, so I am a international publicist and I have an online business and I brand both uh, individuals through the media. Okay. I don't really care what you do. And nobody does. So, no, 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 I'm being very, very honest. Yeah. When someone asks you that question, yeah. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear, hey, Karen, what can you do for me? Okay. Now answer that question. Well, what I can do for you is uh, take your profile, raise your profile through the media, through some of the biggest publications. So now TV stop. Networks. So now stop. Remember what you just said? Hey, yeah. Forbes, you know what I can Now everybody wants their profile raised, right? Yeah. Now say that same thing, but I'm going to change my question. Okay. Hey, Karen, what do you do? So I brand build. No, no, no. I want you to say the exact same thing. Oh, okay. Hey, you, do, hey, you know what I do, Forbes? I can take someone like you yes. and raise your profile. Is that interesting? I say yes. Okay. And All of a sudden, got it? Yeah. Don't answer, it. don't answer because nobody really cares. Oh, I brand and I'm an author and I'm a speaker. Really? No. <laughs> right. So when people, 
and I got to tell you, when you change this little paradigm in your head, yes, you engage people faster, yes, and you get what you want. Hundred percent makes sense. Yeah. Right. So then you can have some fun with it. Why do you even answer the question? What do you do? Because they asked you, but they didn't really ask you. It's kind of this social platitude thing. Yes. I don't really want to know all the things you do until the second or third question. Hey, because here's how it goes. Hey, what do you do? Oh, you know what? Well, here's what I can do for you. I can, or here's what I do. I take people just like you and I raise their profiles online. The next thing you want them to say is how do you do it? Okay. When they say how, yes. now you have an open door to tell them how you do what you do. Oh, I've got a branding agency. But they didn't ask you a minute before. No, exactly. And odds are you've thrown up all over them. I'm a speaker and I'm an author and I'm a coach and I'm a <laughs> Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'm actually doing a networking uh, a little event these next two days. There's kind of a new platform. It actually looks like a table with chairs around it and you go into these rooms and you network with people. And I've been teaching people how to do this much better because I got to tell you, when you start going, a girl yesterday, what do you do? Well, I'm a ghostwriter and I do this and then I'm, and I'm also, do, I'm like, I don't, you lost me like, eight sentences five ago. seconds ago <laughs> so one of the things that people are not doing is realizing i'm not talking to a billboard no I'm talking to a real person yeah and this new age of zooming all over the world which i'm loving yes. i've always made my money through a camera yes i've always understood that by the way here's the next thing when you're talking to a whole zoom room where you're standing on stage karen who are you talking to well you're talking to an audience and you're talking Yourself. No, you're not. <laughs> and that was what separated. That's why I've grossed $2.5 billion. Yeah. Because the big secret, and everyone listening should take note of this, yeah. there is never an audience. An audience doesn't exist. There's only one person with one set of ears and a credit card who can purchase what you're doing. One yes. person. There's a lot of one persons. Yes. So True. if I talk to an audience, I'm kind of talking like this. Hey, everybody, welcome. <laughs> or if I say, hey, everybody. Welcome. I've got something really special for you today yeah. because I know that you want to take the next step forward to learn how to pitch. Yes. All of a sudden, they all heard what I said, mm. but they heard it as a human. Yes. And it's a relatable right. connection between people. I think that's critical for sure. What did you always want to be? What did I always want to be? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I've always wanted to be, I've always wanted to, well, to have my own business, but I've always wanted to be, um, I don't know how to say it without, without <laughs> what? Without being ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, be ridiculous. No, I mean, for me, I, one of the things that I've, I've, I've always had a vision and a passion for obviously is people. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to be is one of South Africa's biggest female exports, not because of the money, but because of how I can impact and change people's lives. So, so stop, wait, so stop for a second. Yeah. That was lovely. Why did you preface it by saying it's ridiculous? <laughs> I don't know. No, I no, think but it's... Stop, I'll tell you what, no, but stop for a second. Yeah. I think that Nelson Mandela, after 27 years in prison, said, oh, it's ridiculous that I want to get back and help my people? No. No, but it sounds ridiculous after all that time, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So For stop sure. letting some voice that I don't know who that is and you shouldn't care yeah. dictate it all. So say again what you want to do. So what I want to do is be one of South Africa's biggest female exports and change and impact people's lives. What do you want to export? I um, well, for me, I want to build Talent Finders, which is my online business. To What is Talent Finders? So Talent Finders is an online talent community that promotes, connects, and educates talent. All talent. Tal like on-camera talent? Yeah, or? yeah. So actors, models, speakers, musicians, so entrepreneurs. Where in, so I have a very dear friend in South Africa who's a huge stuntman. Do you know Shane Kruger? I've Shane heard of him, yeah. So he's a dear friend of mine. You guys oh, should Oh, wow, connect. okay. Yes. Where in South Africa are you? Well, I'm not. I'm in the UK, but uh, my business is registered here now. So I've been living overseas for the last four years. But I'm originally from Johannesburg. Nice. So uh, we had an au pair when I had my little baby twins from Port Alfred. Oh, wow, yes. Okay. Yes. 
the most yeah. wonderful little girl. I've I've been I've lived in Kenya for a while. Oh, amazing! I've, oh, jumbo bana habari gani? Not many Americans <laughs> can speak Swahili. I amazing. love Swahili. Yeah. I named my dog Safi, which is is like a kind of a, a nice phrase for going pure. I I love Kenya. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, but I would love to connect you guys because he's a he's a wonderful fun actor. And as we're all loving watching Outlander, which is, have you seen that series? I haven't actually. <laughs> oh, you must. I'll tell you why you must. Two reasons. Okay. One, it, they spend so much attention to detail. So if you want to go back to Scotland in the 1700s, if you want to go to France at the height of the fashion, that show has gone to great lengths to make costumes and sets and all the things that you read about in history kind of come alive. Amazing. Then something really crazy for me uh -huh. is that in season five, episode one, they're in colonial US yeah. and they pan down to one of the girls and she's doing this with a wow. button on. She's literally doing this <laughs> because it's the oldest toy. And she's I was like, she has a spin gym in the 1700s. And there she was just playing with it for the entire scene. Yeah. So I'm in love with this show now. Amazing. I know, right? Yeah. Now I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, so that's obviously my my biggest vision and then okay you know, so what's your vision with your other, podcast to be who able to, sorry who, who are we talking to right now what's your vision with your podcast well my vision for me so i'll tell you where the other part of the passion is is that everybody references to billionaires and millionaires but the biggest challenge is, is that most people can't even put a thousand dollars in their pocket so I'm really trying to tell the story of people like yourself and who's obviously been extremely successful, but more relatable, more like being able to connect and being able to show people what's possible from not having or building something to what you have today. And I think well, it's here's one of the of storytelling. Here's one of the problems is that most of us went to school. Yes. <laughs> and school is designed to teach you rules. Of course. Designed to squish you down, tell you that it's a standardized test and you're good or bad, or you're an A or you're an F. And we've come to understand that a lot of our most successful people in the world never graduated college. No. Well, how could they be successful? Because I was told if you don't have a college degree, you'll be nothing. Yeah. So we set out these paradigms to keep the masses busy. And that's yeah. what I, and I really do believe that. Because yeah. if all of us were thinking outside of the box, mm. it would be chaos. 100%. So we have to train certain people to do certain things. I remember, remember you know, the singer Cher, she's a, a big rock Love star. Her. She <laughs> said many years ago, she said, if everybody was a rock star, nobody would be bagging groceries. Exactly. And I don't think she meant that in a bad way. No. But we're all sitting around watching one performer. It's like, that's, you know. So if you choose to be an entrepreneur, you are really stepping outside of the box and the norm. And you owe it to yourself to connect to other crazy wacko people like us mm -hmm. and find out how we did it. Yes. So again, I'm going to go back to how a couple, couple of ways that I did it was one, just decide what you want. Yes. So one of the things that I wanted, I was 21. I just started my first feature film. I literally just had an audition and I got the lead in Splatter University. Oh, but, amazing. You know, I, I said, I had better go see Europe. Europe was on my bucket list at 21. Yes. And I said, I should go before I'm so famous. The paparazzi will make that just horrible. That's what's in my head, right? Mm. So I got a book called Europe on $20 a day. Mm. I read the whole entire book. I made a map of myself. I said, I'm going to England. I'm going to go down the west coast of France, dip into Spain, do the south of France, go into Italy. I didn't know there was a boat you could get on to go to Greece. And yeah. I said, I'm going to spend about six months there. I forged my little URL pass three times. I did not have a lot of money. I ate a lot of bread and cheese. <laughs> I had a very clear vision that I wanted to see this place I'd only seen in movies and books. Yes. I set out to do it. I knew why. Here's another thing, my why. I said to my mom, I said, no, mom, I have a vision. And by the way, visionaries have visions. Yes. I said, I want to, when I'm about 83 years old, sit around and tell magnificent stories to my children and grandchildren and all the other kids of this amazing life. Yeah. And you know what the problem is? I haven't lived one yet. Mm. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find stories and make memories. And I did. For six months, I jumped off train in, in, in uh, Figuera, Spain to see the Salvador Dali Museum with a guy who was smuggling drugs. I slept outside a train station in Nice. I did all kinds of, I have, I have stories I could tell for the rest of my life yeah. because I had a really clear why. Yes. And I went by myself mm. at 21 with a backpack and a camera and a, 
back then it was a Walkman, a really big Sony Walkman. Yes, I remember. And I only had two cassette tapes with me, okay? One was Burt back, I don't, they were two, and I would flip them over and over. I listened to the same songs for six months. Yeah, that's amazing. That was life, that was life back then. Yeah. So I ask people all the time, what do you want? Yeah. So, Miss Karen, what do you want? What do I want? Yeah. Well, for me, um, I would say that what I want is more life experiences um, in terms of connecting with people. Um, so stop. So stop. This is how you have to architect a dream. Yeah. Listen to the words that you said. And all my little entrepreneurs, listen. Yes. Every word it matters. You said, I want more life experience. Well, I don't know what more means. Do yeah. you? No. no. You might want to say Forbes. No, but you got, I want to, inter this is how you get things done. Yes. I want to interview six millionaires this month. I'm going to, that's more life experience. Yes. I'm going to travel to this country. Now, when you can write it down, yes. articulate your dream, tell it to someone else, you're more likely to set out to achieve it. Absolutely, yeah. Makes you sense. can't ask for more of something. I don't know. I want more money. Well, here, here's a dollar. <laughs> That's more money. Yeah, but you have you to ask, be specific, for sure. Specifics are what is how the world wins. Yes. So I'll ask you again. It's kind of a game that I play. And I want everyone who's listening to play the game themselves. Yes. I have two rules in this game. I'm going to ask you about five times the same question. You can only answer one time, and then you have to go on to something else. And you can't say, I don't know. So lean in for me and say, what do you want? What do you want? No, no, you. I'm going to ask oh. you, what do you want? What do you want? Um, for me, I want to... No, no, stop saying for me. Say, I want. Let's get okay. bold here, girl. Okay. I want. <laughs> um, I want to be a billionaire. To no, be no, no. Stop. Stop. Then I would have to say, why do you want to be a... You know how, do I mean, you know how much money a billion is? No, I know. A lot. Are you a millionaire yet? No. <laughs> okay. So until somebody has fifty million dollars in the bank, I don't yeah. let them say they want to be a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. Because it's so far, it's so stupidly big. Yeah. Would you be happy with a million right now? Oh, for sure. <laughs> so let's start with what makes you happy, because I can tell you how to get a million dollars. Do you want the secret? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You ask. You take one dollar bill. You ask one million people for a dollar bill. Yeah. Now you're a millionaire. Yeah. Well, you don't know a million people. Well, how about you take a hundred thousand people and you ask them for ten dollars? Yeah. How about you take ten thousand people and you ask them for a hundred dollars? Yeah. Now listen to this. You can do that right now. Okay. We actually teach and coach how to make a course that you could sell for a hundred dollars. Okay. And I'll bet you, given your friends and little advertising, we could find ten thousand people to buy that, and you would make your first million. Yeah. Now you have a plan. Yes. Now you have an action and now you can achieve it. Yes. When you've achieved your first million and many of my students have. Yeah. Now we talk about making your, making your second million. Yeah. But that wasn't, that's not, I want a billion dollars. Do you see the difference? Yeah. hundred percent. Next, Next question. Day. What do you want? For me, I want. Stop saying for me. Okay. Say, let me tell you, girl, how old are you? I'm 41. You look like you're 22. <laughs> if you really want stuff, say yeah. it the way I'm telling you. This is why I coach. This yeah. is why I teach the way I do. Yeah. Because I hear this like music. Of and course. I see people who have failed because they've been wishy-washy. And I've seen people that you would never imagine have massive success. Which one would you like to be? Massive success. Of course. Great. What do you want? I want to achieve, um, I want to achieve financial um, independence stop um, I, okay yeah you want financial independence i'll give you that secret i'm full of secrets <laughs> go outside right now yeah. and get a big cardboard box and live under the bridge uh -huh. that is completely financial freedom no cell phone bill no li that's not what you want though is it no sure. no but that's what you said yeah here's what you might have said i want passive income of ten thousand dollars a month yes okay. but you didn't say that yeah I see what you're saying. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> so if you said to me, Forbes, I want $10,000 a month, we would begin with the end in mind and architect that back. Yes. So if this is interesting to what I'm saying, guys, I'm going to ask that you go to www Pitch Secrets Masterclass for $19. That's all I'm asking people on a Sunday night for two hours. I'm yes. teaching these principles. Okay. Why am I doing it for $19? Because I'm tired of you saying I'm broke. I don't care if you're broke. Get $19. Yeah, no, for sure. 
and <laughs> invest two hours because okay. we are making, I mean, I, um, here, you want to see something kind of crazy? I'm going to take over your screen for a second, if I may. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to share something, but this is where people, this is where your little baby entrepreneurs get all lost. I don't have the money. Well, you know what? What if I told you that you could make money given things that I'm going to tell you? Yes. And this is, all right, so I'm sorry, I wasn't really planning to do this. No, that's but fine. <laughs> I, um, but I think you'll like it. This is one of my classes, and this is what I have people do. Here, watch this. Hi, my name is Jenna, and I made $2,000 at Forbes Factor Live in about an hour and a half. Hey, it's Silvana Kozak here, and I'm at Forbes Factor Live, and I've just made $500 within less than 90 minutes. How awesome is that? Woo! And my name is Mario Padilla, and I made $1,500 in an hour and a half. My name is AJ Plated, and here at Forbes Factor Live, I sold six people into a package and made $3,000 in less than 90 minutes. My name is Dolly Edwards, and I'm here at Forbes Factor Live, and I made $500 in less than 90 minutes, and all from saying Forbes Riley. Hi, everyone. My name is Gary Steven Ayers. I'm here at Forbes Factor. I just made $1,500 in less than 90 minutes. Hi, my name is Cheryl, and I made $500 in less than 90 minutes at Forbes Factor Live. You should be here. We love Forbes Factor! So. Yeah. You tell me you don't know how to make money. I'm going to show you. Now those people have made money in an hour and a half doing a little technique that I showed them. Okay? okay. So I'm, no, I don't want to hear anybody. I'm broke. I've never been broke in my life. Okay? Yeah. So next question. What do you want? So I want to make 20,000 US dollars a month. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Now you put that down, you write that, you put it on your wall. Yeah. Now the next question is how are you going to do it? Um, <laughs> for me, um, obviously through my media um, or through the publicity, uh, my, my biggest challenge, Forbes, to be honest with you, is and I think you know this with a lot of women, is that um, the struggle comes in, or the challenge, if I say, comes in is the closing. Because for me, I find that's a very weak point. And I don't know, if it, I, I don't know a lot of women that I speak to, not all women, but a lot of women okay. I speak to. So I'm gonna stop myself. you, I'm gonna stop you, my love. Yes. You have a whole bunch of limiting beliefs. Yeah. Number one, I'm gonna see you in class on Sunday night. Okay. <laughs> because if you believe that closing is hard, it will be. Yeah. If you believe that people need your product so bad, mm. let me tell you something. Here's one of the things that I offer. I do, I do a, a program and I have you sell this to a friend of yours. Well, I don't have you sell it. I teach you to pitch somebody. Yes. You want to make $500. Literally, you want to make $500. Come on Sunday night. Okay. Because you said a couple of things that you need to hear that you said, like everyone else is saying. Mm. As a woman. Now, the only thing that's hard as a woman is to pee standing up. <laughs> Everything else, we pretty much got you covered if you know yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Stop saying as a woman. I don't know the difference. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, you know, being a woman, it's a little challenging. I've been a woman in a man's world many times. Yes. Uh, and I'm, you want a coaching? You have Come an here. amazing backbone. <laughs> you know what? I just, because I need, because I don't care yeah. that you're a man. Yeah. I've walked away from situations where they thought that sex was going to get them the answer. That's not going to yeah. work for me. No. Um, because I always had a lot of self-worth. Mm. Not a lot of women do. That's another thing that we talk about in my training. Yes. I am That's very right. tired of a lot of women. A lot of people have been put down. By the time you're seven years old, you were made fun of. You were bullied. You were told you're not enough. You were told your thighs, which I don't know. And you mm. carry that with you the whole rest of your life. For sure. That's an issue. Then the second thing you said that really bothers me. Mm. And a lot of women say this. You know what? I'm, baby, I don't hear a lot of women. I don't give a shit what women say. They're not me. Yeah. I only want to talk to the women who gross $2.5 billion yeah. on their own, yeah. who are also mothers. Yeah. Who are I want to talk to those women. Yeah. I don't care what anyone else says because they're not me. 100%. I, I have jumped off the top of a building without a net because I believed I could fly. Sometimes I landed flat on my face and sometimes I flew. Yeah. Neither one anything to do with somebody else's opinion of what I could do. 
No, 100%. And I got to tell you, the more that you believe that and hang yeah. out with women like me and other women like me, and there's a lot of us. Oh, for sure. Who tell you, stop listening to the whiny girl over there. Mm. Makes sense, 100%. So I, I'm sorry, make your own rules. I've always been that sure. way. I just, when I wanted to go, I had a dream about being James Bond. Mm -hmm. So I, when somebody said, what do you want? I want to be James Bond. Well, what does that mean? I said, I want to scuba dive and snow ski and fly airplanes and drive fancy cars and live an amazing, glamorous life. Yes. How do you do that? I don't know. So you know what I did? I found myself at Club Med. Mm. I found them. I, was, I used to go to Club Meds all around the world. I, yeah. I created this opportunity for myself. At mm. one point in Turks and Caicos, I was scuba diving three times a day. Club Med taught me to pay for me to learn how to go skiing. I did all of these things with zero money. Yes. So please don't tell me that you don't know how. I don't really care what you know. Do it anyway. No, I do it anyway. I literally, you have to understand, how about no roadmap? I go off to a club med on vacation one day. Mm -hmm. And I see them doing these performances where they're lip syncing some of my favorite Broadway shows. Yeah. In my little brain, I'm thinking, you know what? I don't know. How, I can't sing. I can mm -hmm. dance. It's a real problem not being able to sing. But I can lip sync. And I'm in yes. my 20s. <laughs> and I went up to the head of the club and I said, I want to do that. He said, well, you don't work here, but I might have to, if I want to do this, he said, well, go for it. Okay. So then I went to another club and I found out you could be an au pair. You could actually live at the club and trade your time to be able to stay there for free. I did that for a while. Yes. And I said, where's the corporate headquarters? It was in New York. Okay. So then when I get back to New York where I was living, I knocked on the door. I don't have a resume. Didn't have an appointment. I said, I'm here because I would like to contribute to club med. I think you guys, I'm 26 by the way. Big corporation. Yeah. I pretty much said, I think you guys need me. Yeah. Excuse me? I said, look, I spent a couple of weeks at Club Med. You guys are a French run company. You have a very bad sense of humor. The Americans are not liking it. And I think it needs tweaking. Really? Well, okay. Why don't you go talk to that guy? Next thing I know, yeah. I'm sitting in that guy's office. He's a vice president of the company. I have no experience, no reason for doing this, but I just wanted to work for Club Med. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what do you think you want to be doing with us? I said, well, I don't know. I'd, I'd work in the boutique if I had to. But yeah. I really want to teach the people in your theater department how to do it better. Yeah. He didn't ask for my resume. I didn't have any experience. I just, the way it was that I wanted this. And you know what he said to me? He said, well, how long could you go to a Club Med for if you wanted to? I said, I don't know. I'll go for three weeks. Mm. He said, okay. We have a person on the microphone in Sonora Bay, Mexico, who we don't really like. If you want to teach him. Here's a free ticket. Go for three weeks and see what you can do. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, I'm at Club Med. Yeah. Now, here's something else that I did that no one gave me permission to do. Mm -hmm. I had another little dream. I, and I don't talk about this a lot. I wanted to be a game show host. Yeah. Want to hear something very funny, Karen? There are no female game show hosts when I was growing up. Yeah, that actually. That seems, yeah. That seems kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, I figured out why. You know why? Why? It has to do with how you dress. All game show hosts wear blue pants. Oh, sorry. They wear like khaki pants, uh -huh. a, white blade, a white shirt, and a blue blazer. They're all men. They all look the same. Okay. Have you ever seen um, the one where you turn the letters? What is that one? Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. Yes. The girl who's very glamorous is the one in the back turning the letters. Yes. You ever see Price is Right? The girls with the silly girls in bikinis. I'm like, that's not fair. No. But if you put a girl in a suit, she looks like a newscaster. If you put the girl too sexy, it's too distracting. It's because they don't know what to have us wear. Mm. That's interesting. And then you look at someone like Ellen DeGeneres or Jane Lynch who've gotten the host game shows. Yeah. They're both gay. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about being gay? Is that Ellen can walk out looking like a little boy in a pair of pants and it's totally fine. It's beautiful. Mm. But because she's never going to wear a dress. It's not distracting. It looks kind of neutral, like a game show host. Sure. And I said, well, this isn't working for me. And so when I got down to Club Med, mm -hmm. by the way, Karen, no one told me to do this. This oh, company's sure. running just fine without me. Sure. I said, you know what? There seems to be a little time at Club Med where you do all your sports till about four o'clock in the afternoon, but dinner doesn't start until six. Yeah. There's this big stage right outside the, um, the, the dining room. And I said, what if we did a game show like at yeah. 4.30 to 5.30 between all the, while everyone's getting ready for dinner mm -hmm. and kind of, they kind of mingle in and they would serve drinks. And I said, I'm going to do a game show. I got to Club Med. I'm 26 years old. Yeah. I walked in to the theater department. I said, hey, everybody, 
Uh, I've been sent from New York and we're gonna create a game show five days a week. You're gonna guys are gonna build a set for Hollywood Squares for the dating game for Family Feud and for the name and Price is Right. And they were like, okay. I said, yes, I need this, I need this, I need that. You're gonna build the sets for that. Okay. And I went in there and mm -hmm. I told them what I wanted. Yeah. And they built it. And I'll tell you what, for a couple of weeks, I every night at 4:30, I got to host my own game shows. Yeah. Well, here's what's funny. I was having the time of my life. Nobody yeah. knew I was supposed to do this. There was an audience of 600 people. Mm -hmm. Everybody enjoyed this to no end, and I was loving it. Yeah. The president of Club Med flies down from New York to find out what we're doing in Mexico that is getting such great reviews, right? How cool is this? This would be my son, Riker Riley. I'm on the radio show. How are you? Good morning. I always say that I would stop for my kids. Baby, are you there? <laughs> Hi. I do not, and I'm on the radio. Can I call you back in a few minutes? I love you. I made a rule with my kids that it doesn't matter what I'm doing, if they have to need me, I'm gonna be there. So he comes down from New York, yeah. sees what we're doing and says, this is amazing. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Then he said, can you go to a different club, Med, and do this again? Now, let me ask you a question. Was there a job resume here? No, I asked you somebody created if it. I could do this? No, you, you I said, this it. is what we're doing. Yes, yeah. So in NLP, we call that assuming the close. Yes. You said you have problems closing. I don't know what that means. I know, Karen, if I've got this amazing product in my hand and mm -hmm. you don't have one, I know that in just five minutes a day, this helps you to burn fat, boost your metabolism and feel better. Yes. I know that I've got it and you don't. Here's the deal. If you give me your $40 and I'll give this to you so you can feel better and look better. Would you like that? For sure. Absolutely. You just said, yes, we just did a close. You know why? I value what I do. I know what I want. I know what you want. And we're going to make an exchange. Yeah. If somebody doesn't buy your product or service, in mm -hmm. your mind, you should feel sad for them. For Not sure. I do. I do. I <laughs> do. What a sad life that you don't have forty dollars that's good oh that's too much well i'm that's you know what i'm gonna take forty dollars right now and set it on fire because that's how much money i have okay so how sad for you that you don't have the money oh wait no oh you have the money but you would prefer to go buy a starbucks let me tell you something that coffee that you're gonna buy for seven or eight dollars if you made it at home would be one dollar you're yeah. an idiot because yeah. you waste your money yeah again Very i feel sad that. so these are the things in my brain yeah. if you say well forbes it looks like a toy I said, well, you know what? I've watched Olympic athletes work out with a jump rope and that's my daughter's toy. Yeah. So yes, now what's the next excuse? Yeah, exactly. And there's a psychology behind being confident. Yes. I don't need to sell you anything. I just need to get a yes. Of course. In fact, when people meet me at a party, ask me what I do. Mm -hmm. Ask me what I do. So what do you do, folks? Now, I could tell you that I've hosted television shows. I've created the X Games. I've worked around the world. Does that help you at all? No. No. I could tell you I've grossed $2.5 billion and 189 infomercials. Does that help you? No. no. Here's what I say at a party. Here's what I say anywhere. Somebody says, what do you do? I created the greatest fitness product on the planet. You want to see it? Yes, absolutely. All I want is a yes. Yeah. We get a yes in that part of the conversation two minutes after I've met you. Yeah. Now we can do whatever I want. Yes. I didn't tell you, I'm an author and a speaker and a mother of twins and I own a television. Who cares what I do? Yeah. You care what I, you care what I can do for you. 100%. So I hope that those are some of really important lessons that we've learned here. No, absolutely. Major. <laughs> they are major. And I'll tell you what, that's what I teach on Sundays. We teach people how to get yeses. It's not about closing. And by the way, the last little secret that I'm going to share with you, and this is what you're missing. This is why you think closing is hard. Hmm. When you are in a sales arrangement with somebody, with a customer, yeah. what do you want from the customer? What do, what, what, are you asking me what I want from the customer? Um, I mean, for me personally. Uh, okay, so stop for a second. Yeah. Stop saying that, Karen. You're now under my tutelage. Yes. <laughs> stop saying for me and stop saying personally. Yeah. What do you want from a customer has nothing to do with you. Yes. Or person. It's business. What do you want from a customer? What I want from the customer is 
to be able to um, show my deliverables and no, to... no, no, no. I'm not asking what. What do you listen to the words I'm using? Yeah, you got something to sell. You're trying to close. Yeah. What do you want from the customer? <laughs> um, the money. Yes, let's start with money. That would be yes. nice. Yes. What else do you want from the customer? I want the customer to be happy. Yes. That's now you're now you're getting a better sense. Yes. So it's not the money that you want from the customer. No. And it's not even that you want the customer to be happy. That's nice. Here's what you want and here's the secret. I've got something. You have you're my customer. You have a yes. want or a need, right? Yeah. Here's what I want from every customer I ever talk to. Yes. I want the words thank you. Yeah. So it changes how you close when all you want is to get a thank you from them. Yes. That means you might have to figure out what their wants or needs are. Yes. Instead of trying to sell them. Yes. They want the million dollar penthouse. You yes. get to be the one to show it to them. Yes. Then you want them to say, thank you. This changes. You want them to buy the car, the house, your program. It doesn't matter. Yeah. At the end of it, you don't want their money because if that's all they gave you, they got sold and they won't be very happy next week and they'll want to return it and they won't tell their friends about it. Yeah. But if people who take my, and you, by the way, go to Forbes Riley's inner circle on Facebook. Yeah. That is my new group. Okay. Watch what people are posting every day. Forbes, thank you for that class. Thank you for this. Thank you. For, I get thank yous everywhere. You know why? Number one, I asked for them. Mm -hmm. And two, we've got raving fans everywhere who are yes. part of a group that is uplifting, educational, yes. entrepreneurial, and fun. Yes. Or we can turn on the news and hear how bad life is. Of course. What would you rather do with your time? <laughs> no, for sure. Stop saying no. Stop saying yes, for sure. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but these little tiny tweaks change your entire, They change everything. Exactly. No, All right, give sense. me one more question. Um, so, uh, well, it, I've actually got, um, what would you say some of your biggest uh, career lessons have been within your career? Everything that you just learned. Okay. Don't give up. Here, don't give up. Don't listen to people who are not more successful than you and keep moving forward. Perfect. And then what legacy would you like to leave, Forbes? What, is, what legacy <laughs> would you like to leave? Uh, oh, I think you froze. Hello? Uh-oh. Hello? Hello? There you are. Hi, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Uh, it's called technology. <laughs> Four million people just jumped on Zoom and you froze. Okay, well, we're still on, so. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, so going back to the last question, what legacy would you like to leave? I'm already leaving it. You know what? The legacy of people that I've touched, yeah. people, everybody who comes in contact with me should feel much better for having met me. Yes. About themselves. Yeah, that's all that I want. Because there is no other thing besides legacy. If I can make a little change, I want my kids to love me. Um, and I want to know that I left the place a little bit happier than when I found it. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us today. And if people want to connect with you, what are the best platforms to connect with as far as? One platform. Go to www.forbes360.com. Okay. Everything is there. You can find everything I'm doing, everything I'm up to in one amazing place. But I'll tell you what, I do a lot of my own social media. Reach out. Um, I do a radio show every Wednesday. If somebody would like to be a guest and promote what they do, they can apply to be on the show. Okay. And uh, we're all about, like I said, Sunday night right now. Join me for $19 anywhere in the world. We have people who come from all over the world because of Zoom to this platform. You will meet new people. You'll be inspired out of your mind. And um, it's, what else are you doing on the Sunday night, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even if it's the middle of the morning on Monday, you guys should join don't let sleep get in the way of your success. Sleep when you're oh, there. No. I mean, even tomorrow I have a podcast with someone from SpaceX and I have to be doing it at like 5 a.m. in the morning. So. Perfect. 
keep going. Stay connected to me. You are wonderful. I love your comments and I love everything that you're about. And uh, yeah, stay connected. Thanks so much, Paul. You are very, very welcome, my darling. I'll see you on Facebook. Yes. <laughs>